Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. This is How to Train a Speedrunner, and I know I say this every week, but we have a very special show for you today. Before we end all that, I want to go over a few quick reminders. AGDQ 2023 Online will be January 8th to 15th. The second submission, submission period for games released after September 1st is going to be uh, open until the 12th, so you can go to gamesdonequick.com for more information on that. As well, if you want to follow what Games and Quick is up to, you can use exclamation links in Twitch chat for all things GDQ. With that being said, we are learning This Way Madness Lies today. This Way Madness Lies is a Shakespearean magical JRPG that has been out for 9 hours and 10 minutes. Uh, this is made by Zaboid Games, which is a fantastic indie JRPG dev. Uh, they've made games like Cosmic Star Heroine, uh, Cthulhu Saves Christmas, Cthulhu Saves the World, all kinds of great stuff. I am super excited to be able to teach this game today. Uh, with that being said, uh, this is a pretty easy speedrun. Um, it's a lot of knowing what to do. Uh, there are some skips involved. Uh, there's not a lot of setup for it. Uh, one thing I will say, um, as a community for the previous game, Cthulhu Saves Christmas, uh, there was a lot of mashing involved, and so we decided, uh, in order to actually preserve our hands, um, because there is a lot of button mashing, uh, specifically the confirm button, uh, and based on some quirks with the Zaboid games, uh, so for those of you who have played them and don't know, uh, for the Zaboid games, they don't disable the keyboard when you're playing with a controller, so the optimal way to mash uh, previous to Cthulhu Says Christmas was to press the A button on your controller and mash Z and enter, uh, which was a lot of just smashing your hand and controller on the keyboard. Uh, so the solution to that was we bound uh, the controller or the um, triggers uh, to confirm buttons. So we were mashing three confirm buttons, which was faster and better on our hands, uh, but still a lot. Uh, so we decided to allow. Uh, one turbo confirm button, uh, which does 16 presses a second. Uh, now, in order to make it a little bit easier to confirm these, uh, we just ask that you show the turbo settings beforehand. So right now I've got this. So you can see right here that I am running uh, one confirm button at 1 16th. It might be a little bit hard to see, uh, depending on what you're looking at, but... That is it. Uh, also, uh, I do have notes for it, which are up on the uh, Steam page right now. Uh, the notes are new-ish, so keep that in mind. Um, game just came out. <laughs> I'm doing my best here. Um, with that being said, uh, timing starts on hitting easy. Uh, so we mashed through all of this. Uh, there are some cutscenes. Uh, we do have the ability to skip them. Uh, and then we're going to go into movement and we're going to select run. You could hold down uh, the run button the entire game, but that, nobody wants to do that. Um, I am going to be saving a lot. That's not necessary. Um, the reason I'm doing it uh, is because there are a lot of skips you can fight. And while it's probably faster in some situations to skip fights... Uh, I am attempting to show you the route and what you would do without skipping fights and having as little experience as possible. With that being said, we're going to run right into this fight. Um, I'll, I'm going to go over what I'm going to do, but I'm going to try and keep it a little bit brief uh, because you can just read the notes on these for the most part. The important part of each battle is what you're looking to do, and on a lot of the early fights, you're looking to clear all of the enemies off the screen as quickly as possible. Um which is just going to be Inferno in most cases. Um, that being said, uh, so um, I don't have a lot of these fights, like the additional fights routed. You usually just kind of figure out what enemies are on the board, uh, and then you already have kind of like a route based on a, a, a mandatory fight. Uh, with all that said, a lot of the fights in this first level are, are all going to be just hitting Inferno. So I hit this fight, and it would just be Inferno, and it would clear it. Uh, that being said, uh, that is experience. I'm going to quit out, and I'm going to skip that fight, actually. Uh, and uh, I guess this is actually the really important tech to skipping things. is So you can see they're all running around. 
and I'm gonna run kind of right here and I'm gonna hit the keep playing or the pause button which just gives me this keep playing button and you'll notice that they keep moving but I don't have a hitbox this is really important in how do we can skip things because we can just kind of like run into their pattern uh, and not do that uh, we can run into their pattern uh, and then press that button so we get skipped over so actually skipping that would be something like this and then we can go right on to this fight uh, I am actually so that is actually something you do want to be careful about when you're mashing uh, because I'm using turbo I mashed right into the fight and I used the wrong command um, so actually how you want to do that fight For most of the fights in the first level, it is one of two patterns. It's either going to be Inferno, Vulnerability, Awakened Faith. Uh, vulnerability is going to apply a debuff to Vulnerability. Awakened Faith is going to give everybody a hyper bar. Uh, and then we're going to finish with uh, Raging Fire. So Vulnerability makes enemies take more damage. Um, and Hyper is going to make the, uh, everybody take or deal more damage. Uh, we do need to equip... Before we get into this um, fight, we need to equip Energetic. That's going to make Emogen start with um, Hyper every battle, uh, which means she's going to start off dealing more damage. If we don't equip that, we don't one-shot this fight. Uh, so Vulnerability makes enemies take more damage. Uh, Hyper is going to make everybody deal more damage on that turn. I ran right into that fight. That was bad. Uh, so... Depending on the enemies that are on the overworld, uh, they're easier to get by. So these are like the second easiest to get by uh, because they're hit. Oh. Not quite as easy. Their hitboxes are kind of like, a, there's like three different hitboxes they have basically. The big blobs have like a hitbox that is ridiculously small. You can almost run on top of them. These ones have like a medium hitbox and then the big so these ones here, these ones have the like the the smallest hitbox. And then the big hulking guys, which I'll show in a minute, will have the hardest hitboxes. I should be hitting the turbo. Uh, so this one here is also just going to be the same Inferno, Vulnerability, Awakened Faith. So yes, it would have been, again, going back to the top of it, it would have been faster to kill them at this point because it was just an Inferno that would kill them. However, I'm attempting to show exactly what happens if you take no additional fights um, because the more fights you have, uh, the more experience you have, which means you'll be doing things slightly differently. This, These notes are for if you skip everything. Uh, and it's going to be a lot easier to show what you would do in a perfect scenario than what you would do in a scenario where you've taken some fights, you've wasted time, but you have more experience because you deal more damage, there's more things you could do. So again, this one is just Infernal Vulnerability. Because uh, this is the first chapter, everything's obviously pretty straightforward. Uh, this is just the most uh, damage you can do to the boss. When Inferno's one-shotting all of the uh, smaller creatures, uh, that's basically the rotation you want to do to wipe out the boss. So here, we're going to take a trip up here and we're going to grab this bomb. Uh, this is an item that's going to do damage. Uh, so there are a lot of items I don't pick up in this route just because it's on easy and you don't technically need them. There is an item that inflicts poison uh, that you could have picked up here. Uh, there's also going to be a bunch of heal... Uh, not a bunch. There's two or three healing items that I'm not going to pick up. Um, that if you want to be safer, you could pick up later in the run. I just don't do it because you don't technically need them. So going into this, this is going to be the first uh, boss of the game. Again, you want to make sure you don't accidentally turbo into the fight. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different because we're not looking to do AoE damage. 
Uh, we're going to hit Balancing Act, which does uh, light damage once it's hypered, which doesn't technically matter, but that's just... It deals more damage. Uh, besides that, it's pretty much going to be the same. Uh, and then we just add one additional uh, Scepter Smash right at the end, which is her first attack anyway, so you can just mash through it. After that, uh, we get a bunch of cutscenes. Obviously, we're going to skip through these. Uh, we do have to be careful on one of the cutscenes early in the game. Uh, so I'm going to take a save here. You don't need to do it. You do just continue on this one. Some of these menus, you want to me uh, do all of your menuing before continuing. Others, you can do it once you're, you've continued. Uh, there's only two of us, but it's still a pretty straightforward fight. Inferno, Raging Fire. Uh, because she's not hypered, it's a row attack. If she would have been hypered, it would have been a single target attack. Uh, but because it's not, we can use it on the front row, it kills them instantly. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of cutscenes. By the way, these games are super funny. So, uh, the, first of all, besides the fact that it's a new game uh, and it's fast to just skip through it, uh, I'm skipping through it because you definitely want to read... Uh, the dialogue. Um, now here, uh, you have to be very careful with your turboing uh, because you do not want to pick the wrong one here. I'm being very careful just so I don't skip through it and have to restart. You absolutely want to pick roller skating here. I'm not going to spoil the reason. It is faster. <laughs> Trust me. I am actually going to restart, though, because in saying um, that you don't want to do the wrong thing, I missed a menu, which is actually important. Ooh. Uh, that sucks. All right. Uh, are we okay? Yeah, we're not okay. Yeah, we'll figure it. That's fine. Uh, yeah, we'll just we'll just go ahead. It's fine. We'll redo this fight. It's not a big deal. So, um, technically, you could have done some weird partying to do this menu right up the front. Uh, it's a little weird to do. So we'll just go through all of these cutscenes again. Uh, so you want to equip Cleaver Strike uh, and then uh, share here. Uh, you want to equip Bear Attack over on Paulina. And you want to put Verdict here. I'm putting these in specific places because that's how I'm used to menuing. You can feel free to do it however you like. Uh, on Paulina, we're going to put uh, Regenerate it here. Viola is going to get in the And then Fiery is going to go here. And then we are going to equip that bomb. And I'm going to equip it over Potion because I do not care about potions. Uh, so again, you want to be pretty careful here. You do not want to go to pandas, even though I think it's actually the better option. Um, here we are going to skip it. Uh, for here, we are going to use this move called the tray, uh, which can actually, I think, high roll completely uh, and uh, kill them, uh, but. That's not going to be guaranteed, so... Uh, for this one, we are going to use Verdict, which is going to cast Vulnerability. Uh, then we're going to Cleaver Strike, and then we're going to come one over to Spike and clear that. And then that's going to be this section here. And now you can just mash through the text for a little bit until the next um, transformation scene.
for anybody who does look at the notes, if you have any questions, feel free to ask uh, either in chat or we do have a Discord. Uh, you can ask there. I've tried to make them as easy as possible to understand. I don't, but also as easy to read uh, because you need to be able to read what you're doing pretty quickly. Uh, so if there's any questions, feel free to ask. I think it's pretty easy uh, to read, but I I also wrote it, so uh, I'm little ahead of myself. Uh, so I guess I should have explained what we have to do in here. I just kind of autopilot through it while we're talking. We're supposed to be looking for evidence, so we have to go look at this note. Then we have to talk to her. Then we have to examine this, and we have to talk to the king. Uh, if you examine the poison before you examine the note, you will have to go look at the poison again. So do it in that order and it will prevent you from having to go back and do other things. After that, we have to come into this house. We have to do all of this in a specific order, too. We can't do it out of order. So we have to go there, then we have to come here and talk to the seer. Then we can go to the route that I was trying to go. Uh, we can come grab Paulina. And then we can do our menu here, which is just going to be putting loyal over innocent and putting tolerant on Beatrice. And we're not going to run into the corner like I was trying to do for some reason. Uh, for here, we just do a weekend. Uh, we are going to bomb the first one, we're going to move over one, and we are going to cleaver this one. Uh, then we're going to do an icicle, and we're going to move over one and do do. So depending on where... Uh, the previous uh, flags are. Sometimes your saves will be in the middle of somewhere. Normally when you reload, it'll be at the last part you entered a map. I might have been able to go through, but it's kind of a risk. So this one here, because we don't have a lot of good AoE right now, so we're just kind of looking to apply Weekend to everybody uh, with the AoE Weekend that we have, and then we're just trying to hit them as quickly as possible. Uh, I already used the bomb, which means for this, and that's fine. Uh, so we are going to save here. This one is really difficult to skip, and we need to do it twice. Um, if you aren't good at it, you can just fight it. Um, because these ones are really hard to get by. Uh, because they have such a huge hitbox. Once you hit this chest, you want to save as well. That way it saves the backpack progress. And you will start from the first part. Uh, the la like the previous part we were starting. The un So... If you find yourself having trouble skipping any of those fights, feel free to just take them, uh, because you have to go past them again anyway. This is not the final boss. Uh, this one is a pretty quick fight. We weaken, we pass. Uh, we hit Balancing Act, and then we hit Bear Strike, and that's the fight. Now we're going to have to backtrack all the way back to the castle. Uh, which means we're going to have to fight all... Well, we're going to have to skip all of these fights again. So if you have any problem... <laughs> that one's a big one, so if you have trouble skipping that, feel free to skip it, or to fight it. Uh, especially since you had to skip it three or four times. They're all, the pattern is also random, so if the game start like, if you're playing and it's like, okay, he's just, like, this fight's not going up, then, you know, sometimes it's just gonna be better to take the fight. 
uh, because, you know, you could be standing there for a minute or two trying to skip a fight that's just not, not cooperating. One, on this screen here, you want to be careful because you got to mash through this, but once you come out of it, if you mash, com like, if you just do all of the ma- ah, crap. I'll I'll show it off. I'll show off exactly what I'm talking about. I had to do all of these skips again, which is fine. So when I go down, there's gonna come up with that little cutscene. And if I skip and pull down right away, if I'm going as fast as possible, that sprite will be all the way up at the top, and I will just run straight into it instead of skipping it. Uh, there is... These ones are pretty simple to skip, but I'm saving anyway, because I don't want to run into them. This is the boss fight. This is still pretty straightforward. A lot of the bosses in this game on easy are easy to... Uh, they don't take long. Once you get to the end of the game, it starts having fights that drag on, just because we're so underleveled. Uh, Miranda did get uh, stunned here, which means we are going to be doing things a little bit out of order, which is fine, uh, because in this specific instance, uh, she was just using the item anyway. Uh, but that is something that could happen. There are things that can kind of mess with the notes or the um, order of what you do things. Uh, the two big ones are going to be disarm and stun. So it's important that you're not just reading off the notes and that you kind of understand what the purpose of each fight is. So, like, in that fight, uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, because we're not into the end game where we're doing, like, complicated uh, multi-turn uh, setups. Uh, but once you start getting into the later game uh, where it's like, okay, I need to use this buff and this debuff and this buff in this order to set up for, like, a hyper turn... Uh, and a stun happens, you need to be able to know how to recover that, which is like, okay, maybe I delay an entire turn, um, and I pass three, like, everybody just passes to recover from that. Uh, the other thing is disarm, which will make you deal less damage, so you need to be paying attention to who gets stunned, who gets disarmed, uh, if your main damage dealers are disarmed, um, how you make up for that damage. Uh, that being said, uh, we do have to do a quick menu here, which is we need to put Rosalind in the party, uh, and then we need to give her uh, these two traits, bold and resourceful. One of them goes over her original starting one, and then we can continue. I see a few people in chat um, asking, uh, you know, it's only nine and a half hours, it's all routed. I have had the game for about a week. Um, I, I was given a code. Uh, I've played a lot of Zavoid games. Uh, I'm a speedrunner. Uh, I've run pretty much all of their games, so I did get the game a week early. Uh, for this fight, it's pretty simple. Inferno. Raging, which will kill the front two. Uh, and then you just ice. Fever and Ice, which will get rid of the other two. You just want the first damaging ability you can get to. Here we Weaken, which is going to apply Vulnerable to everybody. Inferno, which is going to kill pretty much everything. And then we do Rage and Fire and Bear Attack. Oh, sorry, Rage and Fire and Bomb is what was supposed to happen. That would have cleared it. That's that sort of little... In between, a couple fights. And then we want to do this menu before we continue, uh, which is we want to put uh, Miranda and Viola in the party real quick, just so we can equip them. Uh, we want to give Tiara Toss to Logan. And also oh, share because we're in this menu. We're not. Uh, share is already there because I did it last menu. Uh, and then we're going to go down here. Uh, and we want Magical to turn into Inspiring, so now uh, Mogan's going to start with in, uh, the Inspire buff, which makes her deal more damage. 
Uh, and then Miranda is going to get this, uh, which doesn't particularly matter. It just makes her stats go up. So these, besides, these are kind of like your equipment. I haven't really gone over it. It's kind of like your equipment. So it's like your equipment and it also has effects. Some of these we put in for the effects. Some of these we put in for their stats. And then uh, this is going to become cheerful. And then we can go ahead and we can continue. Uh, no, we can't because we need to equip the snowball. Actually, we can just equip snowball there. And we can go ahead and continue. The music in this game is phenomenal. Uh, for here, uh, it is a very quick fight. It's going to be a weaken. Miranda's going to pass, and then we're going to hit Tiara Toss, which is an AoE spell. Oh. Ew, I understand. Okay. I know why the game stopped. <laughs> my mouse went off my computer. I should be turboing here. All right. So from here, so these, some of these skips are pretty easy to do. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to explain. So... The way this works, if you come right here and press up against this pillar, you can run straight across and you will not get hit. So you can just do that here. And we're going to be doing that for another fight as well in just a moment here. We run into this one, and it's going to be the same as the last one. Beacon, pass, tiara toss. We're going to come up here and we're going to hit this crank, which is going to allow us to progress. skip this fight. We're going to cut, er, come up here and pick up three items. In Well, sorry. We're going to get the first of three items. Uh, we're going to pick up three uh, damage dealing items. Uh, in order, I believe it's the flashlight which does light damage. The Nope. Alright. Uh, my note is just wrong. Doesn't particularly matter. The important part is that you get them. Uh, but there are three elemental deal damage dealing items. After we come back this way, we're going to go down here. Yep. There you go. You don't really need to be super cautious for those ones, but this one you do want to be a little cautious for. Like I said, you just press up against that and you're good to go. You also don't technically need to press up against it as long as you're on the right... Um, horizontal line you can skip through it you don't need to bonk up against it bonking just you know makes sure you know you're on the right uh, right horizontal uh, level to get past after we've done all that this fight's pretty similar except with the siren the sirens are gonna survive so we're gonna actually use a bomb here so that tiara toss will kill that one uh, and then Cyclone, and any any damage will kill this. So we just use Doom because it's right there. These next two are pretty easy to skip, which I've said before, so <laughs> just be careful. Uh. Just because they're easy doesn't mean you'll get it every time. There we go. This one is... Some of the enemies have a fixed pattern. Some of them have a random pattern. Because that one has a fixed pattern, that one is super easy to get by. Oh. Huh. So this one's a little bit different because there's more enemies, uh, but we are still going to pass the turn. 
From here, you just want to use two items and then cleaver, or yeah, cleaver strike on the end. So you just up menu, go to that. Up and right, you go to snowball. And you just confirm A and get cleaver strike, and then you're good. We're going to take a quick detour. I'm going to pick up a bigger backpack. Uh, so I guess I didn't really talk about it. Um, you do have a limited amount of items you can equip. And then as the game progresses, you can find upgrades to your backpack, which allows you to equip more items. Here, right before we get into this boss fight, uh, we need to equip Beatrice with Envy. And then we also want to equip uh, Beatrice with a new trait, and we're going to equip it over Magical, and we can run into the fight here. Oh, uh, well, actually, okay. <laughs> we're going to read the notes fully. It's fine. It's not too much more we have to redo. The notes are actually like, if you don't uh, follow them... You can run into some issues because they... Uh, the notes are very uh, meticulously, this is exactly enough to beat the, the following fights kind of thing. So we're going to do a little bit different here because uh, we haven't really used poison before. Uh, but we are going to poison the boss here, which is going to make uh, Beatrice's Doom do a lot of damage. And that's actually going to be what a lot of our damages in the late game is abusing poison and Doom. Uh, for now, we don't have the traits on her to actually do it, but it still does a decent amount of damage. Poison does do a lot of damage over time. So here, we're using random. Uh, it does a random amount of damage, but it's going to be fine. Uh, we want to use Flashlight and Fan here. And then Beatrice is going to use Yin Yang. And we just use items until the enemy is done. From here, we are going to need to do this menu before we continue. Uh, we want to put Blizzard here. Uh, and then we are going to go down here, and we are going to equip Resolute over Loyal. Uh, Paulina, Paulina is going to get uh, Brisk over Magical, and then Regenerated is going to become Complicated. And then Miranda is going to get Contrary over Spontaneous. And then we can go ahead and continue. This is going to be a short fight. Skip the cutscene, obviously. So we use Verdict, which imply, uh, uh, applies vulnerability. We're actually going to Inspire, which is going to make everybody stronger. Uh, and then we're going to use Icicle, which uh, the boss is weak to. We're going to use a Snowball. Uh, we're going to use a Fan, because the boss is weak to it. And then we're going to use an Icicle again, uh, because uh, it's still up, and that's going to beat the boss there. From here, we don't need to do a menu, we can just continue. So you want to be careful where you're using your abilities on this fight, um, because using the wrong abilities is going to make the fight take a little bit longer. Uh, but you can apply Verdict on the boss uh, to get vulnerable. Uh, then you actually want to use Balancing Act on the boss, which is almost going to kill it. Uh, Cyclone. And then you just want to use Raging Fire on the bottom row, which is going to deal a little bit of damage to both of them. There's not really a good way to clear everybody out, uh, so we're kind of just trying to apply enough damage so that we can get them out as quickly as possible. It's not until a little later on where we have a lot of just AoE abilities that we can kind of just like run everything down. We don't need to do a menu here, we can just hit continue. Just 
smash through all the text, obviously. That was a weird little visual bug there, but it's not a big deal. So right off the bat, this is... Uh, right at the beginning, they're usually easier fights, so you can just kind of weaken in Tiara, and then that'll clear it. So this is a really cool area. Uh, visually, it can be a little confusing. Um, there's a bunch of um, things that'll pop up that aren't there, and there are things that are there that aren't actually there. I think it's a really cool mechanic, uh, but it can be a little confusing to remember where all the items you need are. I actually probably could have snuck by there. So this is pretty far away from the actual intended way you're supposed to go, but we do want an item up here. Which is going to be helpful at clearing out waves of enemies later on. That's going to be the Porcupine, which does piercing damage uh, to every enemy. Uh, and piercing damage is just, it ignores defense stats. From here, we're going to run all the way back. And then we're going to save. And we're going to skip these enemies here. Skip these ones. There's a lot of fights in the game that you're able to skip. Um... So a lot of areas have a lot less fights than you'd expect. Uh, this area here has a lot of fights that you can skip. There's only, I think, like three fights you have to take. And there you can kind of see just how um, small those hitboxes are because it looked like I was going to walk right into it and then it was fine. Right up here, this is like the hardest skip in the game. So if you want to, if you just want to fight the um, second enemies here just to get it over with, uh, that's absolutely an okay thing to do. Um, I think it took me like four minutes of resetting to get this uh, a little earlier just because of how big their hitbox is. And you kind of like, I'm pausing a little bit longer than I need to so I can explain it, but that top enemy needs to be like on the right side of the halfway point and the bottom enemy has to be like on the top right half of the screen, otherwise their hitboxes will almost certainly hit you. Yeah, I like that. So if you find that it's uh, increasingly difficult for you to skip that, or you're just spending a lot of time on it, feel free to just fight this. Yeah, see, like, that's how big the hitbox is. Like, it was just so far away. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Porcupine is... Oh, that was... I was cutting that a little too tight. Porcupine is a very good item. I think all of the damaging items are really good, especially in this run. Um, the other items are very good, but not required. Uh, originally, I was picking up Poison Mist, um, but it's it's kind of like a backup item that you'd have to have equipped. There we go. Uh, so it's not entirely necessary to pick up, which is why I, I routed it out. If if people look at this and they're like, oh, I'd really love to have uh, the poison item, then yeah, absolutely feel free to have the poison item. Um, any items that I don't pick up is because it's not technically required, but if it makes it easier for you, uh, and, you know, and you use less time using them, then absolutely go ahead and use them. Uh, this is just a menu. We're adding a bunch of traits. We're adding a bunch of abilities. Uh, and then for the items, we're actually going to be replacing the bomb with the shield breaker, and we're going to have bomb off for a little bit, and then the snowball is going to become the porcupine. 
Uh, so this fight's going to take actually a, this is a, compared to the other fights we've been doing, this is going to be a pretty long fight. Uh, just because these have a lot more health uh, than what we've really been running into so far. Just like all of the minions. And we don't have a lot of AoE damage, so we're just kind of like chipping away at them as we go. Uh, we are going to use, so we just got an AoE poison, uh, which we can now use. Uh, which is going to help a lot, uh, because poison will deal a significant amount of damage to people. The one downside to poison is that poison can't kill them. So if you, uh, like, if you uh, delay poisoning or something like that, you could end up in a situation where the enemies just, like, survived on one, and now you're just like, do I take the turn to kill them? Do I let them take turns and just keep going? Uh, so here we're going to use, this is the first time we're using Break a Leg, which is the Unite move, which is going to leave both Miranda and Rosa at one. So it is kind of a dangerous move to use if you aren't prepared for it, which is why I typically use it right at the end of uh, a battle. That and because the longer uh, the fights go on, uh, the stronger the Unite moves are, which I guess I should have talked about a little bit earlier, but I did not. Um, the really strong moves, um, so the Inferno move that we've been using all game uh, is Unite move, and the Unite moves get 10% te uh, stronger as the game goes on. They get a 20% buff when you're hypered, but they cannot go over 100%. Additionally, um, actually, I haven't confirmed this. I just assume this is true because this is a void game. Uh, but I'm, the enemy should get 10% stronger as well unless they change that this game. Uh, so this is a big menu. Because uh, you have to uh, equip things to every party member. Uh, but right off the bat, you don't need to equip any... Uh, so you just... You don't need to switch the party for the abilities. So you can just equip a fence on Miranda and... Uh, frangible on... Um, Rosalind. Uh, then we can come into the traits. Uh, and we go to Miranda. And Fiery is going to become Quirky. Viola is going to get two different ones. Going to be responsive and yep, proactive. Well, it's rigorous. I, again, so I am reading my notes heavily uh, because this game's not been out that long and I do not have these memorized, so I apologize if I'm just looking at my notes and just kind of reading them off. It's because it's fine. <laughs> uh, and you just switch two people out for Beatrice and Miranda so you can get... Uh, da -da. Cordial is going to become genius, and then for Paulina, uh, not Miranda, Paulina. Paulina, you just put her sign over complicated, and then you can go to continue. Yeah, I'm I'm fairly certain that is still a mechanic. I just never took the time to confirm that the numbers were actually adding up. Uh, so for this fight, we're going to use offense on Amogen. Uh, then we're going to hit apply vulnerable. And then we're going to hit the boss with Balancing Act, uh, which on Hyper deals light damage, with the, which the boss is weak to. Uh, that's actually a pretty important aspect of Balancing Act, is that it's a Dark-type move, except when it's Hyper. Uh, then it becomes a Light-type move. There are uh, traits that can change that. We don't equip any of them. Uh, oh, that's... Technically, so in a lot of these fights, you could try to high roll with um, Betray, which deals random amount of damage. Um, if you want to, you know, try high rolling, feel free. Uh, I do not apply high roll strats in these notes. Yeah, that, that, that would make sense, uh, it applying more on uh, a higher difficulty. Uh, I did my casual run on moderate, uh, which 
I, I actually just wasn't paying attention to the numbers there either, surprisingly. And then on speedruns, I've just... <laughs> if an enemy, you know... There's, uh, that was actually supposed to be Blizzard. That's not the biggest deal in the world. There are very few points in the easy speedrun where it's possible for your team to, if things go well, for your team to die. And it's almost always at the end. Once you get to, like, the final two acts, and it's really, it's mostly just the final two bosses. That's where you kind of start to run into, like, oh, I might die here, or this unit might die here. Before that, it's fine. We don't need to do a menu here, so we can just hit continue. Uh, here we are going to get our newest party member. Uh, I have no problems with the newest party member, but for a speedrun, we are going to move away from the newest party member. Uh, and then we are going to go to Viola, and we're going to do a huge change up here. So we're going to apply setup, uh, twin strike, team player, and barrage. And then we are going to apply Gutsy here, which is a very important ability. Um, Gutsy makes all of the Unite moves 100% uh, on their first turn. So, or sorry, not on the first turn. Whenever uh, Amogen is hyper, all of her um, Unite moves will be at 100% power. So anytime she's hyper, she can do huge amounts of damage early in the fight. Uh, for this, their tolerance to being disabled, or not disabled, um, vulnerable is very high. So instead of using uh, Weaken, we use Faint. Uh, then we use Inferno, which is now at 100% power on the first turn and deals an incredible amount of damage. Uh, then we are going to use Hurricane, uh, which deals a bunch of AoE wind damage. And then we just use Gaia, which will end this fight. So we're going to do go up here, and this is actually pretty easy to skip if you line up. You can just run along the top, and you get the Hyperizer, uh, which is a pretty important item. I'll explain that in just a moment here. Uh, this fight, also, they are pretty resistant to vulnerabilities, so we use Faint on the back. Uh, it also has the benefit of applying Disarm, which makes them a little bit weaker. Uh, not that it's a big issue, but it is nice. We want to use uh, Raging on the front one, because we're just kind of like trying to get them all weak to a point where AoE things will actually clear them up. And we use a bunch of AoE spells here. If you use Twinned, it doesn't actually matter if you use Twinned on the front or back, because they both deal enough damage to clear. So before we run into this fight, we want to do some menuing. We want to equip Royal Pardon here. Uh, Rosalind is going to get spirited over resourceful, and then we want to equip our hyperizer, and we want the fan to turn back into the ball. Then we can run into this fight. This fight's actually pretty easy. Um, so weaken inferno vulnerability, and then raging fire. Uh, the next fight we're going to do is going to be three of these, which is infinitely more complicated. Um, because we just used all of our high damage moves against them. <laughs> and it only clears out one of them. Uh, so this game uh, actually took a lot of inspiration from Signing Force, so that is almost certainly why. Um, shouldn't have taken a drink of water there, I needed to skip this. Yeah, so this game takes a lot of inspiration from Shining Force, so that would be the reason. We are going to start this fight off the same, uh, and just clear out the enemy in the back.
From here, we're just going to apply Toxic to both of them. And then we're just going to kind of, like, whittle away at both of them. Uh, how should I do right? Kind of just dropping them so that um, Doom here will clear this one. A little bit off. It's not a big deal. It's fine. Going to Hyper Rosa. This is going to reiterate. And then we're going to be in Yang, which will clear it out. From here, Beatrice wants... Oh. Beatrice wants to get Wu, and Beatrice also wants to get... Uh, piercing... Oh. I messed up a menu at some point, but oh well. Fixed now. These ones are really easy to fight. You can just kind of hide your way up the top here. Nope, oh, I accidentally hit quit. Uh, did that menu save then? It did not. It did. Now we're good. So that is one thing you want to be careful of when you're trying to move uh, off of that menu, is that if you hit up, you're just sitting on quit instead of moving. Uh, so don't quit out when you're trying to hit, hit keep playing. That's why I fight. And again, if you run into some of these, it's all right to just take the fights. Um, I'm, again, trying to show a route that has no additional experience, so... So now we're going to start... <coughs> Excuse me. Now we're going to... Oh, not in the microphone. Uh, now we're going to start refighting some battles. Uh, but it's a lot easier because we're a lot uh, higher level. Now they're scaled with us, but we have more um, options. So we can do things that we couldn't earlier, and a lot of these fights become easier. This one's obviously slightly longer because it was like four moves originally. Uh, so Rosalind got stunned here, uh, so we're going to be passing her turn. Uh, the good thing about this fight is that she was passing this turn anyway, uh, so it doesn't affect us at all. That was the part where I actually make sure that my menus are... That fight went on a little more than it should have, which makes me feel like I missed a save on something. So I'm just going to take that little bit of time here. So we are... Is this menu, we are supposed to do this. Uh, this uh, is just a much stronger version of what we were already using, which lets her start with Hyper. Responsive should go into collaborative, proactive, enlivened. Rosalind, enterprising becomes unprecedented. Beatrice, stolen. Yep, alright. So now we have to run. So this is another reason why if you ran into any of these. Did I fight? Did I save after fighting that boss? I'm just going to take this fight. We'll figure it out. Probably just this. We'll have a little bit more experience, but we're in the like last four fights, so it's not a big deal. I guess it's not technically last four fights, but...
not where I wanted that to go, that's fine. We have to use Viola now if we can just deal a bunch of damage in a short span. Because she can take three turns in a row. These fights here, I'm going to save on them. They're super easy to skip. You can just like run along the railings and then you run right by them. Uh, did you actually get Evil Bane? You did. I'm trying to scroll my notes down here. So these two in the front are a little annoying to deal with. Uh, depending on who gets stunned, which you got stunned, which kind of sucks. Um, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, we Fringeable. Gonna Vile the boss. Inspire Beatrice. Uh, so now we're gonna Cyclone, which is going to clear this out. And that, so this is kind of the thing where it's like, okay, how do I recover from what I was doing? And the answer here is it's not the end of the world. Uh, if you miss this, technically we should have used a buff here, uh, which would have uh, cleared at, or given us more damage. We can just kind of skip that and go along with what we were doing, uh, which is applying uh, the Doom here. Uh, we're going to do this, which does a lot of damage. Uh, and then we are going to try to apply Vulnerability. So that way, on Mogan's turn, she can just get a big uh, pop-off damage with Yin Yang, which we wouldn't have really done, but because of the stun coming off, uh, it kind of threw off the entire order. Um, so you just want to know what your big damage dealers are. So the big damage, single target damage dealers are Yin Yang, um, Cleaver, Anything, so Cleaver, Bitter Barb on uh, a hyper turn, uh, Doom on a hyper turn, Yin Yang, uh, like those are your big turns. And you want to try and match uh, hyper turns with vulnerables just to get like the biggest bang for your buck. This fight here is super simple, especially because you can apply vulnerable uh, multiple times. So you can just apply Vulnerable multiple times, and then it's just almost dead instantly. From here, we have one last menu. Here, we are going to turn this into Malefic. Uh, and now Beatrice does a bajillion damage to enemies that are vulnerable, which means that her Doom is going to be doing more damage. Um, I guess I didn't really explain it. Um, Doom does more damage against poisoned enemies, and then more damage against vulnerable enemies now, so it's just dealing a huge amount of damage. This fight is also significantly easier now, uh, because we have a bunch of AoE. So we clear them out immediately, pretty much, instead of earlier, where it was like several turns before we got anything done. Now, end game, we're usually just buffing Beatrice up so that Beatrice can apply, uh, you know, a hypered Doom turn, and then we're going to figure it out from there. final fight of this chapter. We're also almost done with the game. Uh, so we're going to weaken and then we're going to immediately Yen Yang because it's at 100%. We don't need to wait for it. We're just going to go ahead and do it. Uh, here we're going to do Greatness which is at 30%. Normally in longer battles you'd want to not do it that early um, but this fight doesn't have too many rounds so it's alright to just drop it right there. 
we're going to start applying as much vulnerables as we can here so that vulnerable is actually there when we want to do the damage. Uh, because we got that, we didn't get any pa or stuns there. Mogan can pass her turn. Hyperize Beatrice. Pass. And then we get a huge amount of dam or, uh, doom there. Uh, now we don't have poison on still, so we have to switch to, instead of doing Evil Bane, we can do Hurricane. Uh, and you are that, so you don't have a hyper turn coming up, I'll just use an item. Uh, Envy is how we're going to do this. And then just any damage from here will kill. Uh, from here, we're on to the final act. Sorry, that's not completely true. There is one more act. Well, there's one more fight before I go into the final act. Which might be a very familiar uh, opponent for anybody who has played Zaboid games. Oh, I, I made the mistake that I was about to say don't make, uh, which is uh, Beatrice for the rest of the uh, game is going to be in a different position. Um, so don't accidentally buff the wrong person, uh, which we definitely just did, so... We have a little bit of damage and we just kind of like try to recover, it's not a big deal. Uneasy if you make mistakes, just roll with it, it's not a big deal. Uh, these are the optimal ways to beat the fight, but they're not required. Just take more turns, it's not a big deal. From here, we can just hit continue. Get all of the text. We don't need any of it. Also, it doesn't ruin the story on a 10 hour old game. Uh, so, from here, we're going to switch our party. We want Viola, Beatrice, and Rosalind. Uh, we do not need to do any menuing here. Uh, we're going to skip the menu uh, real quick because we don't need any. Um, additional uh, stats right now to clear uh, the f uh, first few fights uh, and we don't have everything we have uh, we want to equip unlocked yet so we want to push that until we have everything uh, this one here is kind of difficult to skip sometimes if you uh, take a little bit of time so just really be careful on that one This one here we're not able to skip. It is a very easy fight though, as long as we have Gutsy on. Because fortunately we're at a point where everybody has access to at least one AoE, plus we have Porcupine as a backup. I'm gonna take a save here. I will say that if you reset, it is a lot harder to actually skip those just because of the pattern they become. So before we run into this fight, now we want to take our menu here. Uh, so we're actually going to replace Envy with uh, a different move. Uh, so we do remove that AoE from her, uh, but that's okay. We are going to remove Reiterate and turn that into Bitter Barb. And then... Uh, uh, this is going to turn into Amicable. And then Tolerant is going to become... Uh, open-minded. So now we're going to come in here. And this is where uh, we start running into enemies who will start taking a lot more uh, hits because they have a lot of health. 
uh, and this this mech is going to be in a lot of the end fights and has a lot of health. Uh, so a lot of the end fights are a little bit uh, longer just because there's so much health need to get through. Somebody's definitely, unless I'm getting disarmed a lot, I feel like somebody is not equipped properly. I'm not quite sure who, so maybe I'm just getting disarmed a bunch and I'm not paying attention. This fight is super straightforward. You do want to make sure that you use Cyclone here instead of Hurricane, otherwise uh, Rosalind doesn't have access to Hurricane uh, because it can only be used once a fight. I was committed to going. It's fine. Saved right here. There we go, that's much easier. So we're actually into the final uh, moments of the game. There are only three fights left that are mandatory. But they are long ones. That's not what I want. So this Reaper here is another enemy that has a lot of health and is in the next fight as well. That is pretty hard. It's not super hard, it's just long. And you want you need to manage, you know, all of the uh, stuns and whatnot to make sure that you're doing everything correctly. Uh, nope. That one. Because those vulnerabilities applied, we don't want to actually take any damaging moves. Because we want to stack our hyper turns with the vulnerables, which is why we're just passing here. Poison just wore off, so we need to do that instead of just straight evil baning. Didn't necessarily need to do that, but... Where is my cursor? I'm trying to scroll my notes. So this is the second final fight. This one can be a long one, uh, depending on how turns go, how stuns go, uh, any disarms that might happen. Otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, depending on the amount of damage that happens in the first turn, this is kind of where you start debating, do I take a turn to... Um, do I take a turn to heal? Do I just go for it and hope. Um, normally, if anybody is below 280 on Rosalind's second turn, I will look for a, or on her third turn, I'll look for a heal. Otherwise, I just go with it. 
Uh, so everybody's pretty healthy, so I'm just going to pass. Uh, we're going to greatness here. Move into Yin Yang, which is going to deal a bunch of damage. Uh, then we're just going to pass on this. Uh, with this turn, we're going to use Frangible, which deals more... Uh, has a... Applies more vulnerable. Uh, everybody's going to pass here. Well, two people are going to pass. Uh, just faint here. Which did not apply the vulnerable, but it's fine because you'll get a second hyper turn after. So we can just go ahead with the fight. As it were, we'll apply the vulnerability here. Uh, here we're going to heal ourselves. And then the Doom can go on this turn. Which means we get a big balancing act here. And then we just kind of take this rotation instead. Which should still kill. This is the final fight, and it is by far the longest. We're going to start off by poisoning everybody, and then we kind of try and focus on the two in the back. Uh, we get a hyper turn, so we're going to do light damage to this one because it's weak to it. We're also going to hit it with the Evil Bane. And then we're going to hit uh, the mech with ice because it's weak to it. Then we're going to try and charm everybody. Only the left two will be charmed, uh, but they'll hit themselves for two turns. Uh, which is exactly what we want. Uh, it deals less damage to us, and it helps us kill them easier. Uh, I think I can actually get away with this, because I believe Barrage will kill that enemy. I was wrong, but there is a Tiara coming up, which is fine. Or it can just die. Uh, then we are going to start hitting the mech, obviously. Now this is also another part where I yet to evaluate, do I need to heal, do I need to rest? It's actually better if you do rest here. Um, you would only want to do it if you're at risk of losing somebody. Um, since I didn't feel like I was at risk of losing anybody, I took the, uh, the rest because now this Gaia will kill the back, whereas a Bitter Barb wouldn't and we won't have Gaia up if we don't rest because we used it at the beginning. Now here you, again, these are what these are the turns where you start deciding do I do damage or do I heal? And in this situation I think it's best to heal, that way Rosalind doesn't die. Uh, since she passed, we can do that here. We have our Doom turn on the Vulnerable, which is great. We're going to pass here. Now that greatness is up to 100, we're going to go ahead and use it. Since we already used Frangible, we're going to try Shield Breaker. Uh, and then we are going to Repoison. It's not vulnerable, uh, so we're going to skip Yin Yang. We're actually just going to start hitting with other things. Uh, some people are pretty low, so we're going to hit team player. We got Barb up here, so we're going to use it. Uh, we are going to rest here. We're going to get a heal off here. And again, this is a little, little off script, but uh, because things didn't go perfectly, we're going to try and come back, and we're going to... Make sure that everybody's deal is healed up, and we're going to uh, take uh, an extra few turns so that we can apply Vulnerable again on a Hyper turn and get everything that we want. Uh, we don't really need to do damage here, but we're going to Vengeance just get a little bit of damage as we go. Uh, we want the Inspire here. Vulnerability, and then Frangible should do it. Uh, she got stunned. Uh, in that case, since she got stunned, we are going to just start dropping items. In case she doesn't go, she does go. 
Fringible is not enough, so we're just gonna balancing act. Uh, here we are going to, instead of resting, we're gonna second wind, which will give us all of our abilities back on those two. Rosalind going down is not the greatest. We have 9,000 damage left. Things are not quite going to plan, but that's fine. Uh, we can hyperize. We've got we can actually. There we go, that's the vulnerable we're looking for, which means Yin Yang will go off here. Which means we're set. Alright, so that is a little bit of recovery at the end because things didn't go quite right, but that is the end. So that didn't quite take uh, too long there. Uh, I will just show off what a run does without waiting. Uh, that being said... Uh, I know we didn't plan this, but uh, I think we can take a minute or two break here before we go into a run uh, and finish off the night with the run. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break uh, so everybody can you know, get up, stretch, take, or get some water, anything they need to do, and then we'll be back in just a few minutes here, and I'll do a run just to show everybody what a run looks like without stopping and you know, redoing everything to show off things. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hotfix. This is How to Train a Speedrunner. Uh, we just saw the tutorial on how to do This Way Madness Lies. Now I'm just going to do a quick run of it. Just kind of show everything not in an explaining manner. Uh, just kind of go through it again. Uh, if anybody has any questions, they can feel free to ask. Um, yeah. So again, uh, just before, I'm going to show off that I am still using the same settings. Turbo 1 16th. And then we're going to go right into it. Skip this cutscene. I should have uh, actually scrolled my notes all the way back down, but that's fine. We can do it uh, while we play. Actually, I don't even really need notes on the first one, but... We're gonna hopefully run into a lot less things now that I'm not trying to take it slow and explain. I'm still gonna take a bunch of safety saves. Uh, it's fine. You'll see here that now I'm now that I'm not trying to like have as little experience as possible. That it's just like okay, I ran into a fight in the first level. I'm just gonna inferno, and then that's that. Make sure we get the energetic here. Uh, we want to not mash through our text bar because I just did what I keep telling people not to do, which is don't just straight mash through. You take a little bit of extra time because I just used the first ability instead of using Inferno, which would have cleared everything. fight as well. Now we're gonna come down here, run around these enemies. These ones actually are a little bit of a pain if you run into them, so I'm gonna do my best not to, because I believe it's a little more than an inferno to kill those ones. This fight is technically possible to skip, because you have to pass it twice and it's a little bit harder. I just intentionally run into it, I don't bother with it. And then here, inferno. Same deal as the rest of this. Awaken faith just to get back to hyper. That pretty much takes care of this. We're gonna run up and grab a bomb again. 
trying to scroll notes while I'm moving. Just take a little bit of a pause here. I'm gonna run up, grab the bomb. I didn't really touch on this, but I don't pick up all of the backpack upgrades. Um, if you feel like you need to pick up the backpack upgrades, go for it. Yep. A little bit of a detour from the normal, just because we're doing a uh, balancing act instead sort of uh, Inferno, but... And the first um, act was like the first cutscene. That's not what that was. We just go straight to a continue here, mash through the text. Now we gotta make sure we do this menu before continuing, uh, otherwise we will take more turns. It's not the end of the world if you do, but... It is a lot of extra damage and abilities, especially in an early point where we don't have a lot of... Uh, damaging moves. Make sure we get the bomb. And we, can continue. And we want to make sure that we take roller skate into the panda. You notice that I am stopping a little earlier uh, because I had to route this change like six hours ago. Uh, so that's why I'm like, I don't know exactly when I need to stop. Uh, so we got a high roll on the betray there. Uh, sometimes you won't get it first try, and sometimes you will. So we got the high roll, which means we save a bunch of time because we don't need to do a bunch of extra inputs. It's only really two inputs, but we do get a little bit lucky there. We save a little bit of time. Uh, just to explain a little bit further, Betray does a random amount of damage between two ranges. Uh, and I don't know that ma uh, what the max range is at this specific part. I don't think you have to roll max to clear that fight, but it's on the higher end of damage that you need to roll, I believe. Again, coming in here, you want to look at the note first, talk to this person, examine the poison, talk to this person, who I think is the king. I don't know, I, I don't read Shakespeare. 90% of my Shakespeare knowledge comes from playing this game. That's not quite true, actually. No, that's actually pretty inaccurate. I've... Hey, it's probably like 60%. This menu here, technically, I could have done sooner because nothing on Paulina, but... Over here, and Innocent's going to turn into Loyal, and then Beatrice is going to get Tolerant. And I'm going to ask the continued question of where the hell is my person? This fight's pretty straightforward. I was mostly certain I was going to get past that. The hitbox is really tiny, so... Uh, reading the wrong notes and going, what the hell? Why is this? That's not true. And yeah, because I'm reading the wrong thing. 
Makes perfect sense, all right. So this fight, I am going to do my best to not run into it. I'm going to try, like, passing it like three or four times, and then I'm going to give up and fight it. It's So it's really the enemies in the back that I don't want to deal with, because those are pretty difficult to kill quickly. To the point where I'm obviously going, it's easier to reset than fight them for a reason. These ones are pretty... yeah, okay. Those ones are just free. Uh, so here is, again, very straightforward. You get the vulnerable down, you pass, and then a balancing act and a bear attack will clear it. And take another quick save. So this is the one I am worried about. I want you to go up. I want you to go up. Go up, please. I'm getting trolled here. Thank you. There are definitely certain parts where you'll, like, run into uh, a spot and then you'll hit keep playing so that your, your hitbox goes away and you're like, oh, wow, this is terrible. Like, any part where this enemy moves, I am going to get hit if I unpause right now. And you get these situations where it's like, oh, this is awful. I don't want to unpause ever. <laughs> So again, we're going to mash through, and then we're not going to run down right away because we don't want to get instantly caught. I'm going to take a save here after we've cleared that text box because it's a little bit faster if I do have to reset. I'm going to yell out that and not save. So if this fight goes well, it should be a two-round as long as I don't get disarmed. If I get disarmed, then things are obviously a different story. Looks like we're good. I actually didn't even need to shift over to bear. I could have just done balancing act, or not balancing act, icicle, but. So this is a quick menu. We want to put Rosalind in here. Uh, and then we want to put uh, bold over magical and uh, whatever that was, to be honest. I'd... Resourceful, that one. And then we can just skip all the text. <laughs> the fourth one. There's two new ones, and I'm equipping them both. Uh, this one is pretty straightforward. Inferno, and then Raging Fire clears the back, and then we just want to use two damaging moves. They're pretty low here. So we just shift over to Ice and then call it a day. Here we're going to weaken. If you enfable it, it becomes much worse because you don't clear everything right away. And then Bear and Bob will clear that out real quick. And then that's kind of that interim little fight. And we get a bunch more text. Uh, Miranda and Viola in the party. Uh, we want Tiara Toss here, and then on Miranda, we want Genkin over Magical, and then over on Viola, we want Magical to turn into Cheerful. And then we're good to go. And we should have equipped Snowball there, but we can equip it. We can equip it uh, after the next two fights. It'll be a little bit of a time loss because we had to take an extra menu, but it's not the end of the world. Oh. Keep taking drinks at the worst time. You're not supposed to be moving here. Weird. So again, I'm gonna align myself right up here at the top and then I can just run right by. 
After this menu, I'm going to equip the snowball so I don't forget. I'm just gonna pass here. That hung for a while, I don't know why. And then we are going to realize that we have somebody not equipped properly, and it's specifically a Mogan. Which is odd? Ah, that would do it. I missed equipping Inspire. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do at all. That's pretty terrible, but... Be careful when saving that you don't run into the fight option, because that's just a huge time loss for no reason. Also, like, when you're trying to go to menus, like, just don't hit the battle option. Not in a speedrun. You go pick up all of our items here. Uh, you do not need to have read Shakespeare to enjoy the story. Um, I have read very little Shakespeare. Um, I, this game is great, uh, first of all. Um, they have uh, a lot of neat things they do with any of the Shakespearean things they do in this. I think it's very uh, funny. Uh, I don't want to spoil it by kind of explaining it, but you do not need to have read any Shakespeare to enjoy this game. It might help you understand some of who the characters are, um, but that's not even really required. It's just, that's just more of a, oh, hey, I recognize that name than anything else. It's not required to understand the story. Um, The music in this is fantastic. I, I, I especially like the songs that have vocals. They are fantastic. Great job with the music on this. Uh, I'm going to take a quick save here. These next two should be pretty easy to get by. Part of me wanted to see if I could get by there. Part of me uh, didn't want to risk it. Uh, so because there's multiple enemies here, we take the pass here. Turn toss, Cyclone, and then we just use uh, the first two items and a cleaver. First two items. And then just mash through for the cleaver. Gets us through that. From here, we just hold it across the top. Uh, this game was heavily inspired by uh, that series. So yeah, yeah that would be 100% why. I actually don't know why I saved there. These were super easy to get by. There's, like, no risk at all. Uh, so now I can go in here and give you Envy and also give you Cordial and the Magical. And also I need to equip all of my items. So Rock, Fan, and Flashlight. So we actually want to make sure we poison the boss this time. Uh, then we're going to Teratos and Cyclone. Yeah. 
envy here should clear the front, then we can just go through random. Now we throw a flashlight and a fan. Uh, we're going to yin yang, and we're going to use two more items. Which clears that out. So now we need to do this menu. We go here, and we equip Blizzard actually over. I equip it over the third slot. You can do it wherever. Loyal needs to turn into Resolute for you. Uh, magical needs to turn into brisk, and regenerated needs to turn into complicated, and the Miranda spontaneous needs to turn into contrary, and then we are good to go. We get a very short fight to start. The, yeah, this game is uh, incredible. I, I very much recommend checking it out. The music's great, the gameplay is great, uh, the comedy is on point. Skip through here. Also, because I'm skipping most everything, you're not really getting spoiled. You're seeing some of the fights, but you're not really getting a lot of context behind it, so... I'm also skipping the Sailor Moon transformations, uh, which are fantastic, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, I absolutely love uh, the transformations, um, but they do take a long time in a speedrun, so I am thankful that I am now able to skip them. Um, This did just come out today. Um, it came out 11 hours ago. Uh, I have had early access to the game for about a week, which is why this speedrun is a little more polished than what it would have been if it came out 11 hours ago. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I still probably would have had a speedrun. It just would not be nearly as polished as it currently is. Uh, this has gone through... Uh, I think I'm probably about 40 hours. No, no, I'm about 30 hours since I've got the game. Uh, just trying to get a route set up for right now. Uh, but I've, I've polished a lot of this. <laughs> Let's save real quick. Just in case that happens, we'll spawn right at the... Oh, actually, we don't spawn at that chest. That's new to me. I assumed I would have spawned at that chest. Normally, it sets your flag after a save at the chest. I would have been a lot more careful um, because that enemy kind of like hides behind that tree. I just yellowed it. I would have been a lot more careful if I would have realized that I don't go right back to that chest. The more you know, I'm learning so you can learn. come up here and get this item, which is a very important item. I don't know why I saved for an intentional fight. That was... I'm just getting save happy. Also, I'm eventually going to stop saving as much as I am, but again, new game, new route, not used to it. And it's usually easier to just close the game and reopen it than it is to fight some of these later fights. Especially at this part of the game, uh, where some of the later enemies are just, like, bulky. It's like, eh, I'm just gonna close the game and restart it. You don't have to. Uh, yeah, I'm going the right way. You can just take the additional fights. You don't have to just close out for the time save every single time. Yep, 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 yep.
So at this point here, we actually don't need to fight any additional fights until we get to the boss. Uh, and a lot of these fights are pretty difficult to do quickly. They're not difficult, per se. It's just they take a lot of turns. Uh, so I'm going to probably lose a lot of time skipping them. This one here is possibly the hardest skip in the entire game. Uh, I might have been able to go there, but... Oh, okay, and then I did that. So that's... Oh, I didn't save on that last screen. Crap. Uh, so that's something you have to be very careful about, is that because you're pushing up on that menu is quit, uh, you got to be careful that you don't quit out uh, when you're trying to move forward. Uh, because what I did was I hit up and then A, which uh, in or I, I was holding up. Yeah, just like that. Because I'm trying to go as quickly as possible, I'm hitting up before I hit start, which is just closing out the game. Uh, These ones aren't even the hard ones, but... I did it three times in a row. <laughs> and to be perfectly honest with you, this is still faster than fighting this top fight, I believe. Alright, there we go. I'm gonna take a huge menu now. Beatrice is gonna get Toxic Cloud. Uh, you're going to get Reiterate and Malarite. Uh, a bunch of things need to happen here. Contrary becomes impeccable. Beatrice Tactful becomes genuine. Nope, becomes piercing. And Rosalind Unique becomes... Oh, unique becomes Relentless. Uh, and then Bomb becomes our Shield Breaker now. And then our sub up becomes a Porcupine. Tapped in, so my turbo's not working. So this fight takes a little bit of time just because there's a lot of enemies and their healths are pretty high. And we don't have a lot of strong AoE to take them out right away. Uh, fortunately, we do have enough AoE we can get rid of the wisps pretty quickly. The toxic cloud is going to help with these dwarfs now. Plus, we do have some items to help as well. Rock in front, the Inferno is going to do a little bit of damage. The poison is going to be ticking down on them, which is good. Uh, I think somebody just got stunned there, which isn't the greatest, but I was not paying attention. Uh, you're not supposed to be going, which means you got stunned. Uh, what do we do here? This is an awkward turn. We're actually just going to heal here. take a cleaver. So there's just a lot of weirdness because of that stun. So we're going a little bit off script here. Uh, I'm just going to throw the porcupine to kill you. Uh, Mallory, I'm gonna heal you. We're gonna do a break a leg in a moment. Uh, we're going to up the poison damage though. This is completely off script. So verdict, apply that vulnerable, inspire on Beatrice. The poison should still stay. Uh, it's gonna pass. This is a lot of passing here right now people I need to stay alive should be able to stay alive. Just throw a regen on you. Pass. Uh, Malarite. Not quite who I wanted to heal, but that's fine. It makes sure she stays alive, which is important. I did use the yin yang, that's fine. We'll just do that. And Gaia. 
and then we'll just start doing anything that deals damage until it actually goes through. It should be enough to damage, yep. So that was a really weird fight because, uh, like, the turn order got all out of whack and it just threw off everything, uh, but it wasn't a big deal. Uh, we need to do another big menu here. Miranda needs to get offense. Rosalie needs to get fringeable. Then we need to do a bunch of menuing here. Fiery needs to become quirky. Cheerful needs to become responsive. And indefe indefatigable needs to become proactive. Rosalind Bold needs to become rigorous and resourceful, I believe. Relentless needs to become enterprising. Then we need to swap two of you out for Beatrice and Paul. What? Beatrice and Paulina. Because Beatrice needs Corridor to become ingenious and. What? There we go. You need complicated become her sign, and then we can continue. We need to menu on all of the girls before we go forward because there's two separate uh, fights here. So we use the offense on the emo on emogen here, then we can apply the vulnerable. She's gonna give a huge balancing act. And Gaia. I think you got hit with a disarm there. So it's gonna be a little more than this, which is fine. Off beat here, which is fine. And that should kill. Okay. It's like five damage off. Absolutely. A lot of the enemies have funny names, There's a lot of flavor text. There's a lot of things you can miss, honestly, if you're not paying attention. Uh, it is really easy to miss, like, the flavor text or some of the names if you're not looking for it. And even myself in my first playthrough, I've played a bunch of Zaboid games. Even in my casual playthrough, at some point I went, ah, oh, I'm not even looking for this stuff. Like, I've missed so much just because I've not been looking for it. I did not mean to do that, but that's fine. We can just continue because we're going to switch out our party as soon as we get in. Our party is going to be Beatrice here. And we actually do need to quickly set up Viola. So we're going to do setup, twinned. We're going to do barrage. We're going to do team player. And then Amogen needs to get her gutsy. Save there and hope we skip this. And then because everybody here has really high resistance to vulnerability, we're going to use faint instead of the normal weaken, which means the back one doesn't get uh, vulnerable, but that's fine because we can just clear everybody out with this hurricane and then Gaia can be... So actually, that's a great point. I missed that. I did not even see that name, which is amazing. Uh, how is there a route out? The game came out 11 hours ago. Um, I have uh, been a Zaboid fan for a while. Uh, I've speedrun pretty much all of their games. I've had this game for about a week. Uh, so, uh, fainting the front's recoverable. It's not a big deal. Inferno. Cyclone. It's actually probably irrelevant. 
Eh, it's a little relevant, but it's not a big deal. Uh, it does mean that I want to use a fan on this back one here. Uh, and then I'm going to Tiara Toss. Uh, and I do want to Twind on the back then, because Twind will do more damage. Sky of the front. Uh, I believe you got disarmed then, but I'm going to be should clear. There we go. I'm going to scroll my notes while I do this menu. Royal uh, Rosalind. Resourceful needs to become spirited. And then I need my Hyperizer. And this fan needs to become a bomb again. Uh, not exactly what I wanted. Be fine. It's the vulnerable. Doom probably kills anyway, yeah, so it's not a big deal. So there's actually no required fights between, and there's not even any fights I have to skip uh, between uh, that fight and this fight. There is one fight I have to skip, never mind. Completely forgot about this. This fight's a lot like the last fight, but there's three of them, which makes it actually significantly longer uh, because we use all of our like big moves to clear it out right here. Which means we end up uh, with a lot of extra uh, work to do. Kind of divvying out our damage here just so we can get uh, the left and the right both within kill range. The left's actually in kill range now because Doom is very strong. And then we just kind of drop a bunch of things here. Now we're gonna Hyper Rosa. Her reiterate should do a bunch of damage, and then Yin Yang should clear it out. Especially with that poison. Poison does a lot of damage on these high health units. Uh, Beatrice, good. Beatrice needs to get Wu now. And Beatrice also needs to get. actually menued properly this time. You can just run up here and pretty much skip that, like, guaranteed. Uh, have I done the Tempest already? Uh, oh, oh. uh yes. Definitely not me looking at the splits I have on my other screen to figure out what Shakespeare plays or which act. <laughs> uh, also, I believe it's not Tempest. I believe it's Twelfth Night. I'm not taking that fight, so I'm going to restart. Where's my game? Thank you. through that time. Easily clear it this time around. So since this is a single target, I can skip to an Inferno and go straight here. Uh, we do lose our Greatness turn, which is fine. The extra damage shouldn't be super important. And I actually, it's not even any damage between here and now anyway. Uh, and we have a pass here, so we can do that here, and then Hyper Beatrice this turn instead. And then just Doom. Call it that. And then we need to scroll our notes at some point. I'm gonna take a save here. Technically could have saved anywhere, because I'm gonna go back to the same start point regardless, but... I'm 
play it super risky here, and I'm not gonna... It's actually not even super risky, it's pretty safe to do this. Okay, now we're gonna do this menu, uh, which is Viola needs Evil Bane, and then you should get Persistent here. Viola needs Responsive to turn into Collaborative. Rosalind Enterprising becomes unprecedented. We're gonna do a weekend in here, the Inferno. So we're gonna do Inferno into Hurricane as long as you don't get stunned, which will clear out the front. And then we can just sky the back. Now we can kind of do. We're kind of just rushing some big damage moves out here. Paper on Beatrix. Uh, Beatrice, sorry, and then this and a flashlight should do it. And then I definitely need to scroll my notes. Weekend oh, Inferno. This one's pretty straightforward, actually. I probably don't even need notes for this. Should be a bomb and a cleaver. Yeah. Uh, Beatrix now needs Innovative to turn into Malefic. So now we've got, so Doom does extra damage versus uh, poison enemies, uh, and now it's going to be doing extra damage, well, now she just does extra damage versus um, vulnerable enemies, so she's going to be doing a bajillion damage now. And Mirage will clear. Fringeable, which I've put a little far over than I normally do, but that's fine. This is a pretty quick fight. I... There we go. Where is my cursor? There we go. I'm trying to scroll my notes, I can't find my cursor. Weekend. There is a lot of Eldritch Horrors in this game. Uh, you got stunned, so I am in the wrong place. Uh, okay, so we lose the greatness buff here, which means we might take another turn because we do need to just vulnerable here in order to actually apply... Actually, no, because you're going to pass on this turn, right? Oh, uh, if I would have... Hmm. No, yeah, you, because somebody's passing this turn, so I can just do this. So I don't lose it. Continue here. I've never seen, uh, unfortunately, I've never seen uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, so. Yeah, there are a lot of Eldr Eldritch creatures in this. Uh, Beatrice is in a different spot now, and I'm not going to make the same mistake I did while I was teaching it. Now we can just skip all the text. 
go right into the end. Just go. Yep. No, don't, don't talk. Just. And we are entering into the final portion of the game. And I can almost finally stop scrolling my notes. <laughs> I do need to actually switch my party, which is Viola and Rosalind, and then we're good to go. This first fight is super easy. Weaken into a tiara, we'll just clear it out completely. So this one here can be a little awkward to skip sometimes if you're not going like exactly the perfect route or if you're trying to not pause I just pause and makes it a lot easier this fight's also pretty straightforward because we're at a port uh, at the, a port of the game a point of the game where we have a bunch of different AoE options available to us everybody has an AoE option some have two with porcupine some have two or, you know, Unites or something, so... Uh, now we're going to do a menu, and Envy is going to become Vengeance now, and then Reiterate is going to become Bitter Barb, and then Viola, her preactive is going to become Amicable, Beatrice's Tolerance is going to become Open-Minded, uh, and then we're going to save, just in case we run into this fight because this fight takes a while. Here. Now we're starting to run into enemies that have a bajillion health. Uh, fortunately, in this specific fight, all the other ones die pretty quickly, so we can then just focus on this one. But this is the part where we're starting to, like, actually do boss fights uh, strats on not bosses because there's so much health. I say that, and then this next fight's like a breeze. Yep. This next fight is also fortunately straightforward. Uh, Zaboid's first big game. I don't know if that was their first big one. I know it was a big one. Um, I've known about Zaboid since. Oh god. Did Saves the World come out before Pan Arcade 3 and 4? It might have. So yeah, I'm going to say yes. So they had... Uh, they had Cthulhu Saves the World, uh, Breath of Death 7, uh, both very good games, uh, Penny Arcade on the Rents of Precipice of Darkness 3 and 4, uh, Cosmic Star Hero, and great game. Uh... Hold on, need the menu. Um, Cthulhu Saves the World. Yeah, Cthulhu Saves Christmas, this game. I don't think I missed anything, but I need to, like, actually read notes real quick. Other than this, yeah. So I, I, I think it depends on what you mean by big. Like, their first big project or the, like, the one that got popular. Because Breath of Death came first. Fires up into here. Uh, I'm gonna team player this, and then you're just going to hyper. Mm -hmm. 
I should have done that slightly differently, I think. No, we're fine, it doesn't matter. Oh my god, where is this? Give me this. Go. Eldritch Horrors is definitely their MO, and it's a great MO. I love it. So we're running up to the end of the game here. Uh, these fights are long. And this is kind of like the first real part of the game where it's like, oh, my units might die if I'm not paying attention. It's also the point of the game where it's like, these fights go on so long, I can use my power moves and then get them back, and it's not a big deal. Uh, so this is a part where you have to decide whether or not you want to heal. Or if you just want to power through it. Uh, I chose to just power through it because I wasn't worried. I'm still not worried, so I'm going to pass here. This Fringible does a lot of vulnerable damage. We are going to pass on both of these two. And then we are going to apply a vulnerability here, and then we are going to apply the Faint, which is going to... Fully vulnerable. Uh, we are kind of looking not great here. Um, but we're also close enough that it's probably fine. We've used... Uh, we've used our Yin Yang, so we don't need Beatrice up. She does have a little bit of damage, but if she goes down here at this point, it does not matter, because we're at the end. Uh, so her going down there literally doesn't matter, because we clear this fight. So then we go into here. Uh, we need to Toxic Cloud first. So this is very much a fight of... This fight, more than any other fight, is... There is a fast way to do it, but it is extremely risky if certain people start getting low. So you might just want to go, I have to take a little bit longer because I don't want to redo this fight. Go. Everybody is looking pretty okay, though. Uh, so Cyclone. I'm... going to take the rest here, because this will kill the mech, and if I don't do that, then I'm not able to kill the mech with, um... Um... With Gaia, because I don't have Gaia. I'm going to take this team player here to actually heal everybody. This guy will kill in the back. Uh, we're going to take a rest here because you're coming up on your doom turn. We're going to do a tiara here. Uh, we're going to rest here. We don't get to do the normal move we would do here because we did take a heal. You straight up died, which is not the greatest thing in the world. Um, do need to take a rest here. Um... So I believe what just happened was she got stunned into a poison tick. 
Which, not the greatest thing in the world, but we're, uh, we'll be fine. She doesn't actually have any, um, any Unite moves that we're desperate for. We'll take the rest here. We are going to heal here. Uh, uh, well, I guess she did have that. That's fine. I'll just apply a Vulnerable here. We actually do want to apply a Vulnerable as much as possible on you. Uh, we get to do another Vengeance because we do have a dead party mate. Uh, we don't want to do the Yin Yang just yet because we don't have Vulnerable applied, so we're going to skip on that. We should be good. We do run into a little bit of a problem now because we don't have that third party mate. Um, where their, the enemy's turn comes faster, uh, which means it starts powering up more. So we get the vulnerable there. We're going to get it on the Doom turn. She gets stunned. Uh, but that's fine because you're not on your hyper turn, so we can heal that. We got rid of that. So we are going to Vile Vile. Viola goes down. We are not... Super in the best spot, but uh, we do have the yin yang. Actually, the yin yang should do a decent amount of damage. Uh, that's fine because we can do this. Should give us a little bit of time. Uh. No, I want to save that for the next turn. Should take the damage, but because I have the unstoppable buff, I don't even die. And then I can do this, which kills, which is great, and we're good, and that's the end of the game time. I'm gonna skip this text so we don't spoil anything. So even with things going bad there, like, Rosalind died halfway through my notes on optimal gameplay there. And even with Rosalind dying on this difficulty, it's, you just, it's fine. Um, it is a little bit harder because you have to manage, now I have to make sure that I'm healing everybody do I have enough damage? That kind of stuff. In that kind of situation, that's where it's like, okay, well, maybe I should have picked up the Halo in the last fight, which gives you a res. Um, but that being said, um, super simple to pick up, I believe. Uh, I Obviously, I'm the one teaching it, so maybe I'm incorrect. I've been playing this battle system for, you know, I mean... I've been playing games from Zavoid which have very similar mechanics to this for a while, so obviously I'm a lot more intimately familiar with um, everything that's going on in the battle system and everything, but I still think this is a pretty easy game to pick up. Uh, it's uh, a brand new game, it came out 11 and a half hours ago at this point. Um, easy, the easy difficulty is pretty straightforward. Uh, I didn't actually lose a fight at all, so I didn't even get to show this, but I will pull up just a fight real quick, and then I will do... This should be the final boss. So, if you die, you just get to retry the fight. So I'm just gonna... This might actually take a little bit of time, but like... If you just die, it just immediately goes, okay, do you want to retry the fight? So you're not really ever, like... So if I would have died in that last fight, I would have taken a time loss, but it's not like... It's not like I lose, you know, the run, I don't lose a bajillion uh, time. It's like, okay, the fight's over, I gotta redo it. Sure, if you die on one of the later fights, it is a lot of time, but it's not like your run's over. It's not like, ah, oh, crap, when's the last time I say it? It's just fine. Um, Vulnerable is not quite as good as it was in uh, CSH, because um, I believe it got nerfed in uh, Cthulhu Saves Christmas. Um, I don't 
remember the exact damage numbers off the top of my head for Cosmic Star Heroine, and I haven't done the math on this for this one, um, but I believe it was like 50% less. Um, and yeah, I agree. Uh, Zaboid games are uh, make very fun games. Uh, they're very. This is taking forever. I really thought I would have died by now. <laughs> Uh, but I guess I'm just talking, so it's fine. Uh, but yeah, like, all of their games are great. Um, they've got Breath of Death 7. Uh, they've got... Uh, Cthulhu Saves the World, Cthulhu Saves Christmas, Cosmic Star Heroine, Penny Arcades, uh, On the Reigns of the Precipice of Darkness 3 and 4. Uh, this game, obviously. All very good games. Um, the first ones, the battle system is not quite like this. Uh, but Cosmic Star Heroine onward, the battle system is very similar to this. Uh, some changes here and there, um, but very good uh, games. And they're all pretty straightforward. The writing is good. They're very funny. Uh, yeah, so I believe now Vulnerable's uh, 1.5 instead of 2 times. Oh my god, just kill me. All right, there you go. So now I just, like, do I retry or game over? So, like, even if you make a mistake, uh, you just, go ahead. It's fine. doesn't matter. Go ahead. Retry again. It, again, it's a little bit of a time loss, but when you're learning, when you're getting used to it, it's fine. It's not a risk of gaming over. It's just a risk of losing a little bit of time. No big deal. You leave it on this because there's excellent music. But, yeah, so this is a great, great devs, great game. Uh, the games are all very well written, so if you like JRPGs, if you like Eldritch games, if you like Shakespeare, um, if you just like fun short games, because this is, I did it casually in five and a half hours, I think. I've seen other people did it, and so I, I have the benefit of having played all of the previous games, so I know a lot of the mechanics already, so I know, like, oh, Vulnerable's really strong, I know this is going to be really strong, stuff like that. Uh, I've seen other people who were new to it take seven hours, eight hours, that kind of stuff. They are also working on a new game plus, as far as I'm aware, so there will be extra content. Uh, this is, I believe, a $10 game right now, so I think it's a great game. It's a pretty easy speedrun. If anybody's interested, you should check it out. Uh, we believe uh, Richard has some links to all of the uh, community stuff, so the speedrun Discord, uh, the speedrun page, uh, the guide that I've been reading off of, and actually I should be able to find an actual invite to just there. actual Discord, so the Zaboid Games Discord, which I will grab right now, and then post in chat. Once I actually load into chat... Uh, with all that and said, uh, that is the end of our show, unless anybody has some extra questions... Uh, there you go, yeah, eight ninety nine right now, it's 10% off. So if you think this looks like a fun game to speedrun, I'd recommend checking it out. You can also check out all of their previous stuff. Uh, like I said, great dev. Definitely something you should consider checking out. Um, with all that said, that is all we have for the show tonight. Uh, so unless anybody has any other questions, uh, uh, we are going to take a few minute break we're gonna look for somebody to raid uh tomorrow we do have um um uh, what's faster followed by grudge match and then also next weekend we have king of silent hill which will be a series of races featuring the silent hill series and there's going to be a captain toad anniversary special um, each of those are going to be 1 p.m. Eastern next weekend on the 19th and 20th. Uh, have a, I don't see any questions, so um, we're going to look for somebody to raid, uh, somebody who's doing some speedruns, so if you want mine sticking around just so you can cheer on another speedrunner and whatever they're doing, that would be great. Have a great night, everybody. Yeah.